Hello, welcome to this video. I prepared for you today a complete class about how to paint. And uh, we start first with the canvas. So this is going to be an oil paint on canvas. This is an 8 by 10. And I decided to make this video because there are so many artwork that I've been seeing online and uh, from beginners, of course. And they have so many issues. And even with the discussions about how to fix things, and I've realized that so many of them do not have the information available uh, for them, even though it's it, the information exists, but the application of those information is not really correct, and I don't see it. Uh, and the, and their work. So, I decided to make this video. It probably gonna be a long one, but I'm gonna walk you through all the process, how to start painting from the drawing stage until you finish the painting. So, and I have a reference here. It's gonna be an apple, and uh, everything that I'm gonna do on this subject is gonna be applied to all types of paintings. So we're going to discuss all the fundamentals while we do it. The first thing is you get a, a canvas. So this is a, a cheap canvas. And I use it just for doing these type of videos. But if you want to sell the painting, just choose a better quality one. But what I did for it, it just used a sandpaper. And I just went through it with the sandpaper just to make it. Uh, smoother and also it removes so many imperfections that exist in uh, cheap quality canvases. So the first thing, when you get that, like the majority of people that I've seen online when uh, they try to sell or do some art, when they try to sell some art, they just use really uh, a low quality or stock canvases like this. Uh, just an advice, if you want your work to be higher quality or uh, you want to make it uh, a better surface to produce a better painting, is don't use a stock material. Like this is uh, just you get it from the store and that's it. Rip it off the plastic bag and then just keep, you know, painting on it. No, the, the best way is to get one. And then you add a layer or two layers or three of gessos uh, on top of it and let it dry and then sand it down to make it a better quality grounds. Because a lot of people are ignoring the ground because just paint directly to it. It play a major role to, uh, to produce the painting is better grounds that you have. Anyway, so to start first uh, in the drawing. So the drawing... Uh, first of all, this is the reference that I'm going to use. And uh, first of all, the, the apple looks bigger if I want to put it here because it's going to be like this size. And that's really comparing to the size that I have here. It's not going to make sense. So, And it's going to be too, too large. And you can do it if you want, but aesthetically weird. So what do you do? It just first is the placement, and you decide on the size where you going to put that apple. Is it gonna be here? Let's say let's say it's deciding like okay, it's gonna be here in the middle. I'm gonna uh, also while I'm doing this, I'm gonna explain the issues that I've been seeing a lot. So let's say let's say the roughly the middle is here and uh, the apple like the the middle of the canv canvas is going to be here. So we're going to make it this size or maybe a little bit higher. No. Uh, and to draw this, we just use simplified shapes as I can see here it's there is a tilt here from this side remember 
a good solid drawing before you paint anything makes everything good it doesn't matter the colors later even if you use colors that really doesn't make sense even if you painted a blue apple it's still good if the drawing was good so I'm assuming and and by the way I'm using just a graphite pencil so let's go ahead and and you know as you can see I'm simplifying the shape of the apple itself and then there's a curve here Now, if you squint, you're going to see that this edge here is a lost edge. So there are th three types of edges. There's sharp. We can see it here on the reference. And there's a, a soft edge here. It started a little bit, started a little bit sharp, but then soft and then lost and here also another one it's sharp but at this point here it got lost so this if you squint and they are blend together is the two values blend together then it's a lost edge okay so let's continue uh, so what I'm going to, to draw, I'm going to draw shapes only. I don't draw like what what's an apple lo you know looks like. I'm just looking at shapes here. And I draw it. And I draw the shadow with it. So there's a shadow comes in here and then it's lost in here and almost it's not half but lower a little bit that's when very soft edge shadow goes in this way And if I squint, I can see the shadow on the apple. Goes here and turn because it's a sphere shape. Of course, the shadow is not going to be straight. It's going to turn. And... can see the the terminator line and I will explain these things while I'm doing it so don't worry everything will be explained there's a stem S stem here Okay, you can erase if uh, if you want to correct something. So 
So I'm going to erase the, the guiding lines that I use to see my shape and where I'm at. It's good. It's decent. It's an apple anyway. Like it's a, you don't need to stress about how correct or not correct. This is not a portrait. It's okay. Okay, and now we create some sharper line. Let's correct this. Now, draw the shadow area. There's a shadow here. It's a cast shadow. Then it get lost here. There's a darker area here. In the background. And take a look at it a little bit. It's okay. Anyway, it's decent. I don't want to spend uh, a lot of time on a on an apple. So this area here, there is a highlight, and the highlight comes in, it looks like from a window, because uh, it looks a, it's like a square. Okay, that's it for the drawing. So after we we did the drawing, and now we gonna uh, add a wash of color, and you can use a fixative to spray it first, but I don't have to. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, acrylic this time, and there are two types to do a wash on top of it. And why do we use it? So this is white and it's gonna make your values judgment very difficult. A light color on 
uh, a white background is going to be looking dark, darker than it should be. But it's not. It's just an illusion because it's affected by the surrounding color. And a dark one, you put it on a white, is going to be very dark. And the same thing, the opposite way, if that was too dark. So what I do is just to kill this white thing, uh, you have two options. You either use an oil paint wash and you do it over it. But the, the oil paint, you have to wait for it. So since we don't want to wait, so we're just going to use uh, some acrylics and wipe it and it's going to dry faster. So I'm using burnt amber here and you just rub it with the brush on top of it and now you're gonna see like why I'm doing this because now it looks like I'm trying to make it the drawing disappear But it's not. Well, we add the, the colors in here. We have to just make sure that we do not use a lot of solvent to make it liquidy and you're going to lose the brilliancy of the colors so the first thing is i'm going to do the dark any dark areas here i see i'm going to add it so i can't judge my values against it so i'm not using anything it's just the color itself So let's see. Okay. So even when you paint, you are actually drawing, but with a brush. So when you lose your drawing, you're gonna use the brush to correct it. It's always looking at the shape, the value, and colors. So here, the apple shadow side and as I said earlier that this area is gonna be lost edge and there is a shadow here sharp edge in here okay uh, we have dark area here that's on the right side and under here
So now I'm going to do the shadow area here for the apple. And I, as I can see, it is, it is dark like a black, but it has red to it, a little bit of red. So let's see. It's always about testing. I'm going to use the same brush here because it has a black in it. I'm going to use some alizarin crimson and see how does that look. Now, I can't see it. It's a, it's a little bit red, so I'm going to add more black to it. Okay. And this is going to blend with the with the cast shadow here. Forget about the details and whatever you see. Squint and just add those patches of colors. Now more cr alizarin, crimson, and less black. And let's see. Just notice, I haven't used anything white yet. Okay, back to the to the shadow, make it darker and blend. Okay, now you, we are going lighter to the other side and it's time to switch brushes because it's important to always manage uh, clean brushes and clean cl colors uh, because you don't want it to turn into muddy. If you use the same brush on the both sides, it's going to turn it into mud because you transfer some dark values from this side into the other side. So. Is gonna cause you problems. Anyway, let's uh, let's use some 
cadmium red in here and see. Uh, there is a thing is about not covering everything and leave something from the background. That's what created texture for you. So I can you just use a more of the color and just cover it like this, and you know just just cover entirely whatever behind but if you leave some it will create that texture without needing to paint it I see here in the corner that red should be a higher value which is uh, the cadmium red is higher Then we continue. Adding more red. So that highlight is not necessarily 100% white. Okay, let's uh, paint around the apple to see, to determine later how dark and light things are. So uh, I see in the background like some, some greenish dark green or turquoise 
maybe add some blue to it to make it a turquoise. Let's see. Yeah, we need a like uh, add cerulean, cerulean blue to turn into. Uh, yeah, I like the. That was cerulean blue and black and uh, a little bit of sap green. take from the black on the top to blend it it's still uh, dark as I can see in a reference it's more dark so yeah so always you can adjust the the values of things and if it's not you just test it just put it next to it and see okay it looks good if it looks good then move on now we're just uh, forming the shape Cover that. Now uh, get more black and increase the value here, make it darker. And I, I like to use a, a smaller brush. It's going to take longer time, but the good thing about it is you're going to create texture along the way when you do transitioning like that. A big, a big brush I use it sometimes. It depends, but... I, I, I like that texture is not like solid color. Now we're back to the cerulean blue and sap green and black. I'm going to add, need more black to it.
So getting closer to this area here is going to be lighter. This color that I'm using right now it should be lighter. So I'm going to use a touch of white. A little bit more white to it. Let's see. Yeah. The less white is better. It's just titanium white. You have to be careful using it because it's a bully and it can ruin your colors. Maybe it uh, needs a, a lower value. Let's see. Yeah. I created that edge and here it comes in darker But the the lighter value is actually I see it going lower. Okay, now get it darker value and add
and get some uh, of that. So I'm same value as this. Okay. And you just add it on the top. Okay. Now this area needs to be darker. Let me use more black. Can use your finger, just uh, remove some of the the colors that cross over, or you paint on, on uh, red like on top of it if you want to. This area is, I see it darker. And here, this of course is a uh, It's a darker area in the bottom. Okay. You don't have to finish the top completely because I'm just uh, showing you how I handle the paint. Okay. Uh, just making sure the transition not super blend, you know. I don't need it to be super blended. Now go back to the red, and we can see there are some some areas requires some different value red. Because it's a flat right now, it's just 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 one color. But if you add, you have to look carefully.
into this and add those spots. So I'm just using the alizarin crimson here and look at those spots. And you paint them. It's observation. can see here a darker area there I'm gonna Some use some variety. Okay, let's switch uh, to a smaller, smaller brush. Okay, and. This area in the back is actually lighter. But how light? That's the question. And you put it first. If you see if it's too much, because the highlight here is your highest, uh, sorry, it's the lowest value area with the white color so I don't want this to be lighter than this Okay, and the same thing on the edge here. I see it lighter than So add the highlight. The highlight also 
have edges. Don't forget that. So the edges here soft. Also soft. Now add the lighter, lighter, uh, lighter colors in the on here. I see some areas here with the lighter color, but it's in the in the shadow. Okay, it's just a little bit of suggestions. You don't need to make a hyperrealism. But if you want to, you can. Absolutely. Go ahead and spend all the time you want. do
we add more. Now we correct. Those edges. I think that's good enough. Now we just add the stem, which is a yellowish touch of a green. Put it here. Let's see. Okay. Okay, the color is good.
there is a a top of it also a touch now we draw the shadow need to be darker and the side all the way down I see a darker here that's enough okay that should be it there's a lot of blending going on I see it under it's a touch that'll be it I hope uh, you enjoyed this demonstration and I will see you in the next video